بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم The fourth source of fund is this one Equity uh, Return earning So we have to find out the cost of return earning as well First of all What is return earning? You may know what is return earning When the company make profit Out of the profit Let us say for example Business made for example 1 lakh profit Right? They decide that out of this 1 lakh profit How much of this one should be divided Among shareholders and how much of this one should be retained in the business. The portion of the profit which they want to distribute or they distribute to the shareholder is called dividend. And the portion of the profit which they maintain in the business for the future expansion or requirement or emergency cases is called what? Retained earning. So, the question is here now, if, if you retain the amount of profit in the business for the future requirement and so on, should the shareholder should charge some or should the shareholder should expect some return from this one as, as well or not? Definitely. If you pay, see the point here. If you pay this amount of profit to the shareholder, shareholder will invest it somewhere and they will have some return out of it. But if you do not distribute this one, you maintain in the business. If you maintain in the business, definitely the shareholders will expect some profit out of this one as well, right? So whatever return the shareholder expect out of the return earning is called cost of return earning. But first of all, let me read this, this point itself or this text, what is mentioned here. The cost of return earning may be defined as the opportunity cost of the foregoing dividend to the existing to the existing equity shareholders. Yes. This is the opportunity cost. Why you're not paying paying me dividend? Why you maintain the business? If you pay me, so I will invest it somewhere. But if you do not pay, you have to pay me some return out of it. Right? So that's it. It is the rate of return which the shareholder is not receiving the dividend. If I'm not receiving the dividend, you have to pay some cost for that. So that is why it is called the it is the it is the return that the shareholder is not the cost. It is the rate of return which the shareholder is not receiving the dividend. Or it refers to the rate of return which shareholder can obtain by investing the after-tax dividend in other securities. It is the rate of return which the shareholder can receive by investing their money somewhere else if you pay them. It means if you pay them, they can invest somewhere. But if you're not paying, so you have to pay some amount of return out of it, right? So there is a formula how to find out this one. Simply, we can say, let me once again summarize the return earning. Return earning means the amount of profit which is not distributed to the existing shareholders. So if you're not distributing to the existing shareholder, so basically they expect some profit out of it. So the profit which they expect is called what? Cost of return earning, right? That's it. Cost of return earning, KR, is equal to D or D means dividend or EPS. EPS means earning price per share. Dividend or earning price per share divided by market price. In this case, we don't have NP. Why? Because return earning is only in the case of existing shares, right? That is why we have only NP. Multiply to 100, right? That's it. Note. If the growth rate of dividend is given in the question, it should be adjusted in the formula. Previous formula, there is no growth, right? If there is a growth in the formula, so KR is equal to D or we can say earning EPS. D or EP divided by MP multiplied to 100 plus what? Plus G, right? So this are the formula without G and this is with G. So please take few more points in your mind. It is this one. When the shareholder when the shareholder wish to invest their after-tax dividend in some securities, some expenses on buying of the securities such as brokerage, com brokerage commission ETC will have to be incurred. So we need to make adjustment for that as well. See the point here. This formula without growth and this formula when there is a growth. Next one, they're saying that if the shareholder want to receive their dividend, basically this was the amount of dividend. This was the, this is the return earning, of course, this is the dividend. Let us say, for example, the company paid the whole amount of dividend to the shareholder. The whole amount of dividend if the shareholder received from the business, of course, they invest somewhere. But before making investment, when they receive dividend from the company, first of all, they have to pay tax for the government. Point number one. And point number two, 
when they invest somewhere they have to pay some brokerage fee let me say like this let me repeat it once again say like this let us say for example you have received 10,000 or 1 lakh from the company as a dividend point number one when you receive this one you have to pay tax for the government you have to pay what you have to pay tax so that is one expenses point number two for, let us say for example uh, we can say out of uh, this one let us say tax is equal to 10 percentage so if tax is 10 it means 10,000 will go for the government and 90 percent 90,000 will remain for investment right so you have 90,000 to make investment then when you go in the market then you have to pay some brokerage fee as well let us say for example brokerage fee and some other expenses are five percentage then minus five thousand you get equal to how much ninety eighty five thousand so it means if the shareholders want to invest their dividend after tax dividend in the market they have to pay some brokerage fee some other commissions and so on so if this is so so we have to make some adjustment for that one as well what do you mean by this one it means if you want to pay see if you want to maintain amount of one lakh in the business if you pay for the shareholders if you pay for the shareholders definitely the shareholders should pay ten thousand for the government and five thousand for the brokers so they are able to invest only how many how much they are able to invest only 85 so if this is so if this is so if on the other case if you're not paying amount of one lakh as a dividend to the shareholders so you have to pay cost only on how much on 85,000 it means the company is not paying the return on one lakh the, to the existing shareholders because of return earning the company is paying only return on 85,000 why this is so because if even the shareholder receive amount of one lakh they cannot invest one lakh outside so 10,000 will go for the tax and 5,000 will go for the commission and so on. How much they are able to invest in the market? 85,000. If you are able to invest only 85,000, so keep this one leg in the business, we will pay return on 85,000 to, to you as a as the existing shareholders. So if this is so, so the brokerage and tax should be adjusted in the dividend, right? So in this way, you can divide it. So D multiply to 1 plus T for tax, 1 plus B for what? For brokerage, right? divided by mp multiplied by 200 if you have g then you have to adjust the g also k r is equal to d divided by mp multiplied to 100 plus g into 1 minus t into 1 minus d note one point you have to remember cost of return earning is less than the cost of capital the cost of equity capital this is because there is no expenses on the brokerage dividends on tax uh, okay dividend on tax and so on so it means if you maintain if you maintain the return earning in the business cost of return earning is less as compared to the cost of equity why this is so because there is no brokerage cost as well as there is no we can say tax on the dividend itself so that is why if you want to compare these two formula cost of uh, return earning k r is equal to k e into 1 minus t into 1 minus b so if i ask in the exam for example whether cost of equity is more or cost of return earning is more so you have to say cost of return earning is less as compared to the cost of equity why this is so because on one leg of return earning we pay return only on how much on eighty-five thousand. that's it please watch the next video in order to see how to solve the question